Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the May 11th Town Council meeting for Lake Clark Shores. Can we get a call to order and roll call? Mayor Robert Chalhoub. I'm Vice Mayor. I'm sorry. Mayor Paul Shalhoub. Yeah, Mayor. Present. Vice Mayor Robert Shalhoub. Yeah. President Pro Tem Gregory Freebold. Here. Council Member Baltine Rodriguez. Here. Council Member Albert Pravone. Present. All right. I'd like to have a moment of silence for some members of our community who passed away recently. Jackie Winchester, back in April, she was 91 years old, former resident and supervisor of elections for Palm Beach County. John Gigliotti, he was 80 years old, lived on Pine Tree Lane. And Terry Ann Castrinos, she was 58 years old and also passed away in April of this year. May their memories be eternal. Father Peter, would you be so kind as to do the invocation? Let us pray. Oh, well, Heavenly Father, we call to thee today asking for guidance, <clears throat> wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion allow us to grow and nurture the bonds of this community. Fill us with thy grace, O Lord, as decisions are made that might affect the residents of Lake Clark Shores. We thank thee about our, our gracious and compassion, slow to labor and abounding in love. We glorify thee for the countless ways you have blessed us. May all that we do be rooted and grounded in love. Give us the strength to love thee and see thy perfect image and likeness in others. This we ask. Amen. Christ is risen. Indeed, he has risen. Would you be so kind as to also lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Father. Take a motion to approve the agenda. I'm a second. All in favor? Aye. Take a motion to approve the consent agenda. So I'm a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Moving on to presentations. I know we have Chief, Chief Fire Chief Tracy Adams present today. Doing fantastic. How are you today? I'll get it. Yes. He's we can hear you. I don't know if is it picking up on turn the microphone on the uh, broadcast. Anyways, I can talk loud. It's okay. So my kids will attest to that. You have to do a microphone. Not not like microphone. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, good. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. It's nice to meet everybody in person. Hello to the, the uh, police chief as well, and the mayor and all the council, and to the community that's here. Father, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure to come. My name is Tracy Adams. I'm the district chief, one of eight district chiefs that serves Palm Beach County Fire and Rescue. Palm Beach County Fire and Rescue is pretty big, as you know. It serves all the way from Jupiter to Boca, east to Lake Worth, west to the Great. So there's eight of us in my, in my position that oversee certain pockets of the county, and I oversee your pocket here in my Clark Shores, along with uh, four other municipalities and some areas of county pockets as well. I have 24 years on the job as of November 16th, and I've worked with all, all through mostly all the ranks. I've had the pleasure of serving as um, on a rescue as a lieutenant, as a company officer, as an EMS captain, a battalion chief, and now I get to serve as a district chief. And district chiefs are mostly an administrative role, they're not on the street anymore. But I do love being on the street and serving the community. My husband is also a firefighter down in um, in um, Point I have three children that have all come up through the cadet um, program that we have. The cadet is a high school program, so we definitely have fire rescue family to eat, sleep, and breathe it. So, for my commitment to serve the area. 
I um, have a, um, it's my annual report or fiscal report. I did bring a copy for the village manager and for the mayor, and I can send electronic copies as well. But it has some pretty good, good information from the past year. Other than that, I was just pulling up statistics. For last month, it looks like we ran on my clock shows 25, uh, 25 calls. 21 of them were medical calls. One was a vehicle accident. One was considered a very hazardous material parallel. And two assist in investigations. So it was pretty large percent on uh, medical calls. Super happy to see that you have a new gate on that 17th Avenue. I guess that's the east entrance. My neighboring of the town, it's kind of my neighboring district, uses that gate more than my um, all Palm Springs area when it comes in from there. But I'm super happy it's called a click to enter. So it reduces response time, more of a radar frequency, and we need to press it and the gate immediately opens up. And it's something of the future. So I'm super happy to see that you guys approve them and think about that before a lot of other communities, all the new communities are gonna be required to do that as well. So thank you. That's definitely gonna help serve the citizens here to get us into the area quicker when we need us. Other than that, so that's all I have for tonight. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Chief. Anyone have any questions? Thank you very much. Beautiful report. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate, appreciate your continued service to our community. Thank you. Thank you. And we have legislative updates from Senator Louis Berman, our senator. And former Grand Marshal. <laughs> yes. That's right. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me, Mayor, Vice Mayor, President Pro, Pro Tem, Commissioners, um, and the people of Lake Clark Shores. I'm so proud and happy to represent you and to be your voice in Tallahassee. Um, we just finished our session this last Friday, a week ago Friday, so everything is pretty much hot off the presses. Um, we had, when I first, I, this is my 11th year in the legislature. When I first started, we had a budget that was in the $60 billion range. This year, our budget was a, over a hundred billion dollars. We had a hundred and one billion dollar budget. Um, when we started this session before, as we were doing committee weeks, there was a doom and gloom because of COVID. Everybody thought we're going to have a really tough session. We're going to have to cut everything. And then the economy started doing better. The projections got better. And then we got the American Recovery Act. So we got $10 billion from the federal government. And a lot of that budget is part of that. We put a fair amount in reserves, about $6 billion is in reserves. Um, so I don't think we'll have a $100 billion budget yet next year, but hard to say, because um, that $10 billion really filled in some gaps. They're trying to use that $10 billion on programs that are not recurring. So um, things like, uh, you know, infrastructure and, and, and things that we can do that are tangible or things that was really what we used the money for. But we did fill in some um, health care because when we started, there were going to be cuts to hospitals. Now there's no cuts to hospitals. Um, education, we increased slightly our per student spending. And those are always the two largest parts of the budget. Healthcare is the highest part. I think we put in uh, $44 billion for healthcare and education is the second highest at $30 billion. Um, so overall, I, I think it was a really good budget. Um, we brought a lot of money home to Palm Beach County. Um, I'll let uh, Richard Pinsky um, talk a little bit more about that and programs. There's grant programs. Even if we didn't bring money specifically home, there's a lot of grant programs. So hopefully that will be something that Lake Clark Shores is able to take advantage of. Um, I like to talk a lot about, I like to give you like a little update on what happened with preemption because that's a lot of what your job is. And I have to tell you, um, this year was a really bad year for preemption. <laughs> And um, part of it was, we, I was just speaking to Richard Pinsky about this, you know, nobody was allowed in the Capitol. So the entire time that we were there, we were basically under lockdown. If you wanted to testify to the Senate, you had to go to the Civic Center, which is like three blocks away, and you were on TV, and they had total control. And like, the if there, we were short of time, they could say, you have one minute, and then you'd be cut off. So. There wasn't a lot of input, unfortunately, and I think that's partly why so many of these bad preemption bills were able to work their way through. 
but here's a couple just so that you know. I'm sure the League of Cities is going to talk to you about a lot of these. Um, the one that I think you have the best shot at getting the governor to veto is about home-based businesses. And basically what the bill says is you can't enforce any ordinances against a home-based business different than you would against any business in your community. So you can't say a home-based business has to have less hours. You can't control what kind of business it is. Somebody could open a stereo shop in their garage or a funeral home or whatever they wanted. Um, you can't can change the hour. The hours have to be the same. So um, that bill just barely passed. There was a lot of opposition to that bill. And I think that if you lobby the governor, there's a strong chance that he might veto that bill. Um, we did a bill about impact fees. You can only raise impact fees 25% over two years and 50% over four years. That was in response to Tampa had they hadn't raised their impact fees in years, and then they put in a pretty big raise. So now those impact fees will be limited. Um, local occupational licenses can no longer be required for painting, flooring, cabinetry, interior remodeling, um, and cottage food industries, um, which needed some regulations, and we put those in. But then, of course, we put in things which um, may, which you know, were pretty on the high, high on the side of preemption. And um, they raised the cap on gross revenue from 50,000 to 250,000. So to me, that sounds like more than a cottage food industry if you're sp if you're making 250,000. Um, one of the most troubling bills for you all um, is became part of the Florida Building Code, which is HB 401, and it prohibits local government from regulating specific building design elements. There. It, it was, um, there was a lot of um, people who came and, and talked about it. So there are certain exceptions in it. The exceptions are if it's in a, um, if, if, well, two things. If you have, a, if your local government has a design review board or an architectural review board, then you have an exception. And if it's in a plan unit development or master plan community, there's, you can still regulate building design elements. And if it's in a historic de de district. Um, we also did a lot on uh, fuel and renewable energy, a lot of exemption, a lot of preemption, including you can't even issue a policy statement saying our city's goal is by 2030 to be carbon neutral. You're, that's, that's no longer allowed. The state has preempted all that. And also issues about where you can put, um, where you can limit gas stations and things like that. So I'm sure that'll be worked out. You'll you'll see all that. Um, the really good news, we did not pass a vacation rental bill. So you still, all your rule, all, whatever you put in place for vacation rentals is still there. You still have the right to enforce noise and parking ordinances as you want. So that's, that's the good news uh, in terms of preemption, but it was a really pretty tough session on preemption. Um, I was really happy. I got a lot of bills through this year. I think I had seven parts of my bills were in seven different bills. Um, the, the parts I'm the most excited about, um, one is called the purple alert. So we have the amber alert for children who go missing and we have the silver alert for adults who go missing. Um, the purple alert is for people who are in the 20 to 60 year old range. So it fills the gap and it's somebody who goes missing with a developmental disability or cognitive impairment, something like somebody with autism. If they go missing now, there'll be a big procedure in place to look for those for people who have developmental disabilities and impairments. So very excited about that. And the other thing I'm excited about, and it's not getting a lot of press and I'm going to start I'm going to start my own little press campaign on it, and I hope people hear about it. Um, because of COVID, we had a lot of children who I felt were really fell behind this year in school. We call it the COVID slide. And my bill says that if you have a child in kindergarten through fifth grade, and you feel like they fell behind and you want to hold them back, as long as you show an academic reason why you want to hold them back, you can hold them back. And the school cannot prevent you from doing it. So we're going to start advertising that so parents know that that's an option for them because of COVID. Um, so uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. It's always my pleasure to represent all of you. I'm sorry I didn't get to see you this year in Tallahassee, but maybe next year we'll all be able to be together, hopefully.
to keep COVID in the wall be there. And Thank we'll have an open capital. <laughs> I hope so too. Thank you very much, Senator. I truly appreciate all that you do for our community on a yearly basis. Anyone have any questions for Senator Berman? I just wonder why the hell this is so headstrong on this on business where you can do how does that affect like let's say within municipalities that have homeowners associations? <laughs> the HOA can still go govern. The HOA is governed. So the yeah. HOA really has more power than the municipality. Um pretty much, <laughs> yes. Crazy. Yes, it is. It's You're right. It's private. Private property. You're right. Yeah. 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 But they do. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I think I really believe that the governor could be pushed to veto that bill. I mean, the rumor was that somebody had a friend who was running like a bakery out of their house and they weren't upset with the way they were regulated. And that's what caused this whole boom. So that's crazy. You know, that one person. Well, that's like the alimony reform bill. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still nothing happened this year again. No, no alimony reform. I keep telling them do a do a legislative survey and, and figure out what's the way to address alimony reform, but nobody ever does, and so it doesn't get anywhere. Uh, Any other questions or comments? We appreciate your hard work. Thank you. Thank, Thank you again. Uh, Thanks. Senator. It's my pleasure to represent all of you. Thank, Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Pinsky, for our legislative recap. No, we did in Tallahassee. I think you've just been. <laughs> uh, I, I just thank you for taking this time to speak to me on this as well. Uh, Mayor, Councilmember Richard Pinsky, Manager Dan Clark, Senator Berman, and we are very fortunate in Lake Clark Shores to have Senator Berman. She is an asset. She's very effective up there. Everybody likes her, which is not only not always something that you can say when you're running for office up here in Tallahassee because there's always someone behind your back, but uh, but Lori is very well third, thought of. So we fortunate um and i'm also very fortunate that she took probably two of my three pages <laughs> so uh, let me just go down and let me try to hit the things that she did not uh, and i'm glad that some of them gave credit to the federal stimulus because had a version that was that was very heavy consumer protections and things like that uh, they refused to reopen the statute for any more affordable loans whereas the Senate went into it with not only a seawall but resiliency on home projects things that would actually help properties and protect properties but yet the house did not want to go along with it so the bill uh, ended up dying I think they actually changed the name from PACE in the Senate bill to um, Resilient Energy Efficient something like that. They called the REIT. It's called the REIT. So, um, so, uh, so hopefully that, that will happen. Uh, yes, the home based business uh, statute uh, bill that passed is, is, is uh, not good. Um, you basically can't do anything that, that, that would be different than a regular business. That means so that includes noise. I mean, it's, it's not a good piece of legislation. And then when you add on that, the cottage food is part of that. Someone making, selling more than $50,000 worth of food out of their kitchen in Lake Park Shore sometimes is a little hard to conceive, uh, but that's what the bill would allow now. So can I ask so you a quick question? Get your, question get your garages churned up, smoking gate or whatever you want to do. <laughs> Katie, Katie bar the door now. We're in West Palm Beach. So when you go and you apply for a business license, you have to get an occupational license. There's zoning requirements for everybody's different business. So how would that affect Lake Clark Shores from an industrial to a light industrial to um, somewhere where you could do catering or things of that nature? How's that going to work out? So for instance, on, uh, on uh, let's say, Forest Hill Boulevard, mm -hmm. you have some businesses opening up. Uh, maybe they're maybe they're selling sushi, right? And so, um, so let's say uh, the mayor wants to start selling sushi out of his garage. He becomes a sushi chef. Uh, whatever license or whatever restrictions uh, is on that business, you cannot impose any more restrictions upon him. 
he gets to sell sushi out of his garage the same way the sushi chef on Forest Hill Boulevard. Would so there was an example of a mechanic. Oh, they have to have a light industrial zoning to be able to operate that. They, if they, if still they want to fix trucks in their garage, you can't impose any more restrictions, including noise, than is on another uh, similar business hmm. in your other area. You can't impose something new just because they're in the residential home. You can't impose something new. Interesting. May I interrupt, uh, Mr. Mayor? Um, I'm receiving some text messages saying that they're unable to understand Mr. Pinsky. So there's issues with audio. So I don't know to what extent we're able to assist that because I want your message to be heard to our neighbors. Do we have a different microphone we can give them? We just need them to stand back a little bit. Oh, okay. But then I didn't bring my glasses. So the next, uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, the doc stamps, uh, what we used to know as Sadowski fund, uh, that has been revamped. As you know, every year uh, from the sales of real estate, the doc stamp uh, fund, a uh, portion of that was always uh, segmented for affordable housing programs, uh, both for local governments as well as affordable housing developers. Uh, that has now, uh, but it could always be swept. So what they, uh, what the legislature did is they've now put a fence around that money where it cannot be swept any longer into general revenue funds. Uh, and there will always be $200 million from the doc stamp uh, revenues that will go to affordable housing. And in addition, there will always be $111 million for septic to sewer conversion projects and there will always be 111 million dollars going into resiliency and sea level rise projects so that uh 400 422 million dollars uh supposedly will not be swept and they're going to be uh and they're going to be appropriated in those categories uh, another good item that passed in uh because i'm glad that senator berman gave you all the bad news uh <laughs> i have a couple of gems i'm not over uh, the other is the uh, Resilient Florida Grant Program, and um, and that that is a program that probably won't be up and running until completed until 2023, uh, because that is going to be an annual fund that will be created for resiliency and, and to mitigate against sea level rise. Uh, the the um, and and the good part of it is I and I hope it's a direction that all appropriation uh, project money will go in the future, and that is the Department of Environmental Protection will be the decider. Uh, applications from local governments will go in September 1st of every year. I uh, don't know if they'll be accepting applications as early as this September, but who knows, because the first thing they have to do is uh, DEP uh, is uh, receive funding to develop new uh, interactive flood zone maps, not necessarily the tie into FEMA, but what we believe in Florida is the most uh, at-risk communities for sea level rise. That's supposedly not going to be done until 2022, and so that's why in 2023 they're anticipating the first uh, projects will be approved by DEP for uh, that will be ranked according to need and then and then appropriated. So now. Um, Nothing wrong with this because my favorite senator is in the room, but now a lot of the decisions are made about who the legislator is, who the lobbyist is, and it's really, they may say what's at risk and what's the most need and who's putting in the most septic to sewer nutrients into the, into the aquifer, but it really comes down to at the end, you don't see DEP, you don't see the water management district. What you do see is the appropriators in the legislature picking winners and losers. So hopefully, the Florida Resilient uh, Grant Program will will start bringing it back into line uh, with with what Florida needs and not necessarily on a, on a political decision. Um, and then uh, I'm going to end with yes, you will you cannot do anything to cite uh, to re, to limit a sighting of a gas station any longer. And as Senator Berman said, and I think it bears repeating, and that is should the town of Lake Clark Shore decide that by the year 2030, as her example, that you want to be zero carbon, uh, you have to figure out another way of getting there besides reducing the amount of natural gas or other fossil fuels that you use. So you're frozen at what you're doing right now. You can't ever do anything by ordinance 
by goal or, or any other method of saying we could possibly be reducing our, our dependent upon whatever that number of natural gas and fossil fuel is currently. Um, as far as the appropriation goes, uh, it was, a, it was a, a, an awkward year because everyone went into session, as Senator Berman said, thinking we're going to have a billion dollar or more shortfall off of a $97 billion budget. So that is why with your city manager, or your town manager, we sat and we decided what the project would be. Uh, we tried two different approaches in the Senate. Uh, Senator Berman uh, did our uh, uh, septic to sewer con conversion planning at $600,000 because they were the ones that were indicating, don't ask for much. Uh, and then in the House, they had a different kind of a rule. So we actually had Representative David Silvers put in for a million dollars of a $2 million ask. So we tried a couple of different approaches. Unfortunately, uh, the Senate did not hear bills like they usually do. And in the past, Senator Berman's always stood up and, and, uh, and introduced uh, our request. The House went through that process but we did not make it into the budget. So unfortunately, uh, we came up empty. And it was most disappointing because last year, as you know, we did get $260,000 for the project that the governor ultimately vetoed. So we tried to make that argument and I was sure that, oh no, they're not gonna do that to us because you know we got, we got, we got vetoed because of COVID, but um, we uh, unfortunately did not make it in. So I was uh, disappointed in that. The other uh, issue was our annexation, and uh, my uh, compliments and many thanks to, the, to uh, Mayor Paul Shalhou for a, uh, a yeoman's effort. And uh, at one point, I thought he was going to come up to Tallahassee, uh, <laughs> and uh, but he spent a lot of time on the phone, a lot of effort trying to get that bill uh, heard. Um, we had some other bills in Palm Beach County that did get heard and passed, so that was good for Palm Beach County as far as local bills, but we did not make it. So the last two weeks of session, I did spend time with uh, staff, Representative Roth, uh, and uh, we uh, we do have um, the uh, verbal agreement from the chair in the House, the local bill committee, and the staff in the House uh, that uh, if we change our approach, which is reasonable ask, uh, then uh, then I think next year third time will be will be the charm. So it's unfortunate it didn't happen this year, but. Um, I am confident that next year that uh, I think that covered everything that I wanted and that and that Senator Berman already touched on and I'll try to answer any other questions. Thank you very much, Richard. Um, with regard to the doc stamp, the 111 million for separate sewer conversion, and then the resilient Florida grant program, is it between these two things? There's essentially our approach and asking for appropriations. We might not do that next year, and so we're going to be going looking to the DEP to get the funding. That could, great question. That could very well be the case. That's again, that is what the policy uh, purpose was: was to move it into the same way. Right now, you have to get on a five-year uh, road program. You have to go to your local MPO, and now we call it PPO. I think PPA. <coughs> the local, whatever that local planning of all the communities that sit and decide those five-year projects. Very few projects anymore are road projects that go to Tallahassee. It used to be the same way the water projects. Everybody's throwing road projects in. Now they're all vetoed because you're not in the five-year work plan. So it took several years, almost a decade, but now there are no member projects for roads. I mean, it's like sidewalk, uh, school stuff sometimes, but that's changed. And so this is the intent to shift things over that your water management district and your DEP uh, will be will be the uh, will be the repository of the request ranking and then eventually uh, get into uh, get into a line item in the budget the same way we have a, a line item in the budget for transportation and roads bridges their 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 aggregate numbers hopefully uh, soon in the next few years will be that way with water projects and <clears throat> All right, thank you anyone have any questions. That was my question. The uh, septic to sewer conversion, the reallocation of the doc stamps for that to fund it. I just want to make sure that we're not preempted in any way. And you've explained it. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Richard, for all you continue to do for us up in Tallahassee and even when you're down here on the ground. Really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Quasi judicial proceedings, public. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Um,
I don't know if you know this, but the uh, Blue Way Trail was oh, uh, received its state official designation as a trail last month. Yeah, yeah, I did know that. And, uh, and so now, very nice. Now we Thank can you. ask Senator Berman for Blue Way Trail money next year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we will. Okay. Thank you. Thank you both very much. Be right. safe. Moving on to unfinished business, we're going to have the second and final reading of Ordinance 2021-02, amended Chapter 62, Utilities Article 4, Stormwater. An ordinance of the Town Council of the Town of Lake Clark Shores, Florida, amending Chapter 62, Utilities Article 4, Stormwater, in part to provide for, a revised, for revised definitions, to delete references to industrial activity, to clarify illicit discharge prohibitions, his prohibitions, exceptions, and notification to repeal duplicate provisions to revise enforcement procedure by providing warning notice, notice of violation, appeal abatement by the town, and cost of abatement, providing authority to codify, providing a conflicts clause, a severability clause, an effective date, and for other purposes. Take a, <clears throat> take a motion. So moved. Second. So all favor? Aye. 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 All right, moving on to new business, approval of the interlocal agreement between Palm Beach County and the town of Lake Clark Shores for construction related services associated with the installation of a 12 inch water main along Lawrence Road. Okay. We have a discussion on that? Yeah. I'm happy to provide some background. We uh, entered into it. We, we've been trying to build this 12 inch water main project for uh, since 2015. We had some challenges. We've overcome the challenges. Um, we are ready to move forward. We got a $125,000 CDBG grant from Palm Beach County. Um, because of CDBG grant uh, monitoring requirements, we asked Palm Beach County to help us with this particular contract they have agreed to do that um, but the project price is 735,000 and they're only giving us 125,000 so we're uh, this agreement is a funding agreement to make up the difference audio is bad that's because I'm talking too close to the mic there you I have to remember to sit back all right all in favor of the agreement how about so moved how about right. second uh, yes. Yep. Moving on to audience comments. All right, so we're going to go in the order that I believe they were submitted or compiled or that I have them here. Either way, Miss Angela Grant. Yes, Bill? Oh, uh, I didn't know you were going to start. I'll wait. That's okay. You want to wait? All right, Miss Angela Grant. <laughs> Come on, you have to come on up here and you can state your name and your address. No, no, it's down. Can I take my mask off? Or? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hi there, I'm Angela Grant. I've been a, a, well, a Wellesley resident since the beginning. My daughter and I moved down from Connecticut. Since then, I've been mostly overseas teaching on military bases. She joined the Navy, she's down in San Diego, but I'm back. Um, so I attended, I'm starting to attend our Wellesley board meetings and we did find out about the road to be uh, widened out of Florida Mango. I realize that's a county program, but since you're here and I'm here and the meeting came up, I thought I would just come um, to start trying to be part of the town. And in case you know something I don't know, for example, whom to contact at the county level, I would appreciate it. Um, our understanding is that it will start in October. Uh, one of the things that we are confused on is whether there will be paved sidewalks on the two sides. I know um, you all attempted that at one time way back when to pave our side and we were not enthusiastic. Whether it's bike paths, so we're a little unclear on that. Um, we're wondering if there were opportunities to speak either as individuals or um, developments or town. We never heard about it, maybe it didn't happen. Um, and I guess my last question is if you can refer me to specific individuals at the county level that I might talk to. This is really just an information gathering exercise at this point. October seems like a long way away, but it's really not. 
it's going to make a huge difference to us in many ways, not just losing trees, but uh, I've seen a couple of detour sounds. Not, I'm not sure what that's about either. If there's anything at all that you all can share with us that we don't know about, or tell us who would know more about it, that would be very helpful. Sure. I, our town manager, Dan Clark, has got his finger on the pulse of the situation from day one. Um, you can certainly contact him for any questions and information on who he's been dealing with and when things are going to be happening. But briefly, Dan, is there any updates on the road widening that you can provide now? The, um, to answer some of her basic questions, it's going to be a three lane road, which means two lanes and a center turn lane for the entire length of the roadway from 10th Avenue to Summit. There will be a 10 foot sidewalk on the east side of the road and a six foot sidewalk on the west side of the road. Um, the bridges, all of the bridges are to be replaced in this project uh, from 10th Avenue to Summit. And uh, Morton Rose is the name of the uh, director of Road and Bridge with Palm Beach County. And you can find his contact information on the Palm Beach County website. And he is the one that can tell you the details. Director of Roads and Bridges? Yes. The, the At Palm Beach County. County, yes. And if you want to tell you whether there was an opportunity for the program or an abundance of people to speak on this project if they're opposed to uh i don't know i don't know how what the county's process is or or what they do we get a notification that says uh we're widening this road and you have conflicts with your utilities so tell us how you're going to fix your conflicts uh and that's about when we start finding out about things and any connection with um, the course because we heard that the part of the purpose of the project was to expand it really wasn't clear so Palm Beach County Road and Bridge has a um, bike path uh, plan for Palm Beach County, and they want to connect all their parks and all of the uh, appropriate visitor centers. So this particular improvement is to connect the um, John Prince Park with the zoo. So people can bike, walk, uh, or whatever they want to do to get from John Prince Park to the zoo. I'm sorry, John Prince Park connection to? The zoo. The zoo. Okay. Drew Park Zoo on some. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. Appreciate Thank you. your time. Our pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us today. Look forward to seeing you at the next meeting. You're welcome. Ms. Grant. Dance card. Jim Boger, Mr. Berg, would you be so kind as to join us up here? Some noise from Sea Dews. You're going to state your name and your address, please. Jim Boger, uh, 75 Um, it seems uh, starting around two o'clock on Friday to see the show up. And I don't mind seeing it. They don't bother except for the ones that turbo charge, super charge or whatever. But uh, that those that can't be the normal box sound. Now we used to have a bag and I think it was a late part that had a big top bottom and see now the ones in the Ran out this way, ran out that way. He's not around. Anymore. What happened? Was it because of the noise? I don't know. I, I was just, that's why I was told somebody not to be. I heard the grapevine and somebody complained about the noise. But you, you guys, you guys on Westlake Bike, <coughs> you can hurt to get out there. I hear it even from the other side of the, the yeah. mic. But I'm wondering what can be done about it. Well, I think we've looked into this issue multiple times. I don't believe. Got to catch it. There's, well, That's we do the have the marine. <laughs> the marine unit's been out a lot. Uh, I'd say almost over the last year, uh, lately. 
doing stops and checks and we have to report every month. What weather permitted? We had the guy after each of the And I see it. He's, he's, he has, you know, the potential to fall to teeth. Yeah. But it's not going to You know, these things are. Sure. I wouldn't be surprised they're not doing 100 miles an hour or something. They're pretty fast. I've, I've yeah. seen them. Yeah. I don't think there's an, an ordinance or any rules on the noise on from create, created by the call them the motor boats or motor craft on the water. Is that right, Dan? Uh, the chief can help me, but really about the only thing we can do on the water is if there is uh, reckless driving, reckless operation. And that's pretty hard to pin down sometimes. Yeah, we 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 have written uh, over a dozen tickets for careless and reckless operation uh, on that. But uh, chasing somebody at 100 miles an hour—that's why if if you're around the interstate and you see the motorcycles going over 100, they know that the law enforcement cannot chase them. A lot of times there's different ways of technology and cameras and also uh, using uh, uh, helicopter assets for that. The gentleman that you were talking about with the, the boat many years ago, he just moved. Yeah. Right. No, he moved too. <laughs> well, it, it had more more to do with the aircraft landing than it did with the, the noise of the seaplane. Well, I, I can I can let you in on a secret. Um, quite a few people have them in their backyards, but uh, a lot of people when they use to put the boats in, there's only so many uh, boat ramps. So a lot of times you have the staff here. You can go uh, at our boat ramp and it's all photographed, so we can check our camera systems, security camera systems. On So I'm sorry I only come when I've got something to complain about to ask you to do for me, but that's where we're at. I got three things on my little list. Um, first is, I don't know what changed with, and I know this is DOT, but I just have to throw it out there. It's taken forever for the light to change to get onto Forest Hill from Pine Tree. It used to be, we used to be able to pull up and trip it. It doesn't trip anymore. Now we sit there for five minutes for it to change. And there's sometimes there's no traffic going either way on Forest Hill, but it takes that long for it to trip. So again, I know it's a DOT, but if you could maybe give a shout to them and find out what they changed, because it was fine. For a while we could trip it, now we can't. Um, second one is golf carts. Um, I read the ordinance about golf carts, and I know we they put in shore lines that just came out today about some new changes in the rules. I think we need to remind people, the parents especially, that if you're not licensed over the learner's period permit, you're not supposed to drive anywhere. On my street, I'm on Venetian, but if you come to Venetian, I've got kids that are younger, that don't have a license or a permit for the driving. And you think it's something that you can do. Last summer, there was a kid that lived on Venetian that liked to be returned to my driveway. I 
I know you can help me. I would help you drive my way. And my driveway has appeared to, before I got it, of putting these black top, black top. It's got a little bit of rip. And I get worried that when they're going and doing their fast little turn to my driveway, they're going to be like this. That they I think it starts with the parents. So I've got kids on my street in Lake Clark Shores. I'm not against golf carts. I'm just against them being used in an unsafe way. So that's number two. Number three on my list, you all are going to laugh. Um, I had an incident um, in the end of March, March 21st. Um, some guys in a boat on C-51 Canal behind my house. Um, I saw them pull up. They had high-powered, what I thought were rifles. They were air guns, and they were killing iguana east side of the C-51 Canal. Um, that's where the wall is. Mm -hmm. I saw them. in my opinion. So I called the police. I didn't like the way it was handled by the department. She was sitting there. I didn't like the way I got a copy of the incident report. I asked for an incident report to be made. Um, the incident report is actually comical. It's got over seven errors in it in the names of the spellings of the people, the addresses. It doesn't even have the identification of the boat that they were driving. It's my understanding from social media for Lake Clark Shores next door that several weeks after my incident, the guys were seen on the canal and other places shooting and people were posting that they were concerned about their children and their pets possibly being shot with these high barrel rifles, um, air rifles, which I, I understand there's nothing we can do about that. No. I'm just here to bring it to your attention that I don't appreciate seeing this i don't appreciate the way it was handled um and so you know maybe we need to try a different approach i don't know um i know that if things aren't don't work with the way we have our police we could always hire the sheriff to be come and take over lake Clark shores with with our law enforcement i'm that's a, i know it's an extreme but i just i don't like the way things were handled and i don't like the fact that these guys have now been seen several times on our canal um, shooting at animals. So that's it. Thank uh, you. Quick question. Yep. When is the light issue that you have? Is it in the day or is it at night? Anytime. It doesn't trip. I remember driving back. I mean, over the years in the daytime, it usually doesn't trip. Yeah. <clears throat> no. 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 And I and I and I I know that other people have been upset about the fact that they can't get the left turn lane off of Forest Hill sometimes to come into on the pine tree that really doesn't bother me because it, it i'll wait it is what it is um and usually the traffic because of florida mango or wherever it ends up it doesn't you're not there that long I mean, there's always a gap and you can get across um but obviously you can't make it left out on the to forest hill without the arrow well since you're here tonight and we have the chief and we have our 10 minutes if you'd be so kind to maybe stick back and we have, have a discussion yeah. with them because I think we have an amazing police department. I love our force. I think they do a wonderful job. And that's the other thing. I do too. But let me just say this. I've been living here 10 years. When I first moved here, and until probably five to six years that, that, since when I first moved in, the police were, and, and I've seen a lot of turnover, and I don't know if that's because of benefits or whatever. I don't know the, ra the reason behind that. I just know that when I first moved in, that the police would always wave to us. We'd be standing out in the yard, they'd wave. We've been out in the yard more during COVID than we were in prior years, and they don't wave anymore. We're waving, they're not even paying attention to us. Um, in years past, there'd be a dog that would be running loose, 
We'd be like, we have no idea. We'd stop the officer and say, we don't know where this dog goes. They knew where the dog went. They knew what house it went with. There was that. <laughs> There was that sense of community and that investment in us. I just don't feel that right now anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Tim Daughtry. Welcome, Tim. Tim Daughtry, 14 Penny Keller Road. So to begin with, I have to concur with her on some of the stuff. Uh, that intersection of Pine Tree and Forest Hill, it's a disaster waiting to happen. If there's anything we can do at that intersection, we really do. There's some, it's that simple. And the timing is an issue and it has gotten worse. I agree with you. A little bit louder, Tim. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, and then the police officers waving. I'll be honest with you. I, it, it just doesn't happen anymore. It just doesn't happen anymore. And you're talking about community, which leads into why I'm really here. Okay. Um, I was notified last week that I would no longer be a part. I've been a member of the code enforcement board for over 10 years in this town. Okay. I have committed myself to a lot of volunteer activities in this town. The TVs right here were wired by me no cost to the town. I volunteer with the town barbecue all the time. I write checks to the town barbecue to pay for the ice cream every year. Um, last couple years, although this last year we didn't do it, we did a loop around a lake. I've written checks to underwrite costs for metals and things at the loop around the lake. And I've spent 10 years in the code enforcement board, okay? And I think we do a really, really, really good job on it. Uh, Paul Hughes does a great job as chairman. I've been vice chair, and I think we've done a very good job in managing the code enforcement cases in this town. And I was very disappointed that I was, I wouldn't say removed, but I wasn't reappointed to that, that position for the next two years and everything else. So I'm coming here to say disappointed about that. I have a certain amount of anger about that. And <clears throat> community's important here, very important here. And I can remember a discussion from this actual place right here that our dear departed friend Jim Tackett said, the volunteers are what make this town, okay? And the citizens are what makes this town. And we need to really concern ourselves with our community. And if it's more important now than anything else, considering what we're going through with the virus, community is important. The volunteers that make this town happen are important. And like I said, I'm very disappointed and I'm angry that I wasn't reappointed. So there you go. Well, thank you. Thank you for much. your time. Thank you very much for all that you've done for our town over the many years. Absolutely. Bill Murphy. Yes, Bill. <laughs> We're out of cards. I got you, now, Bill. Bill. That was the last card. I got some more. William Murphy, 1841 Evergreen Drive, um, went out, uh, picked up with um, Jim Walton, Greg Parkinson, Greg Parkinson, and uh, we cleaned up the lake somewhat, but we only got a thousand pounds of trash and 300 pounds of recycled material. But when I was out doing that, I saw that we have a new phase of, uh, what do you call it when you hunt lions? Safaris? We have iguana safaris. The boat comes along the canal and they point out the iguanas and then with the scoped air gun, shoot the iguanas and leave them to fall into the water and not dispose of them. So we need to look into this. Um, they do the sound wall side. I've never seen them do the west side. So I don't know. If, but. I appreciate that and really appreciate all the work that you did for clean up the lake, which is something I'm going to touch base on in my council comments. But I've discussed this with Dan and He's brought up with the chief to see if there's anything we can do about it. So they're looking at it. Thanks. Thank you. 
So Dan, do we have any emailed or uh, audience comments from the virtual attendees? We have. Um, we have Mr. Mike Bredaway uh, that would like to speak. Emily, if you could unmute Mr. Bradaway so he can talk. Uh, he is self muted. Unmute yourself. Anyone other than Mr. Bredaway? We also have Rick Zeno. Right. Emily, if you could mute Mr. Bredaway, we'll come back to him and let's go to Mr. Zeno. He is also self muted. <laughs> These are two sayings. I, it's a saying I believe that should describe all of 2020. And clearly part of 2021. All right, um, any emailed questions that came in? No, sir. Give everybody, can you unmute both of them? Let's see if either of them figures out how to unmute themselves for the next 10 seconds and if they do, great. Yes, one moment. Thank you. Okay, they are. Um, I unmuted them, but they're still self muted. All right. Well, I see the comment cards. If uh, they figure it out here, maybe we'll be able to come back. Let's go on to status reports. Start with the town attorney. Mr. Sheck's report is in your, in your packet. Uh, uh, I have nothing to add to that. Anybody have any questions? No. All right. Chief? Thank you. Uh, all of you have a copy of the report. I'll touch on some bases. Um, the police department responded to 320 incidents. Uh, we patrolled the waterway 19 hours, had five contacts. Uh, we also were involved in the drug take back day and we recovered 78.4 pounds of prescription drugs that were turned in. And this was uh, turned over to the DEA for destruction. Uh, we had six arrests last month, to give you an idea of the arrest, trespassing, disorderly intoxication, assault and battery on a law enforcement officer. And there was a violent domestic, uh, criminal mischief, then we had a, um, a couple of loitering, prowling, and a couple of trespass and a DUI arrest. So that'll give you an idea for the month. Also, one thing I wanted to uh, thank the town manager. Uh, he worked with me for the past year on the uh, LPR tag reading cameras. As you know, you all approved them. Uh, these cameras are going to be placed at different locations and record information of vehicles coming into the town. Uh, we have a camera sighted for Pine Tree, West Lake Drive, Arabian Road, Keller Road, and Lake Clark Drive on the north side. These particular uh, cameras are different than the average LPR cameras. These uh, cameras are the uh, new technology, artificial intelligent type cameras. So. Um, what's unique and what's great for the town is that uh, they're leased. We can move them around if we have to. The software updates and the cloud storage um, is all handled by the company and it won't involve the town, it won't involve staff. And the storage is real important when you're dealing with the public want access and stuff. So uh, this will save us a lot of time and money. So we're looking forward to these uh, cameras going in effect and it will be a good database 
and it'll be another tool uh, for us to have for the town. Our average response time on 911 emergencies is still three to four minutes. So to give you an idea of that. So if you have any questions, feel free. Just for the residents in attendance at the meeting, yeah. I think that's great that we recovered over 78 pounds of, of drugs during the take back. But residents, if they have drugs that they don't need, need anymore, they can bring them to the town and, and the police park is still right. disposable, even if it's not a drug take back. Day. Right. What we do is we uh, will storm and then uh, when they do the drug take back, and what they do is they don't want people uh, flushing them or putting them where they get into the water table. So they're uh, disposed of by incineration. Okay. So this one. Well, that's great work. Thank you very much, Chief. Mr. Clark. My, uh, my report is in the packet. Uh, I have two things to add. One is um, good news. We got clarification today from, or yesterday from Treasury on what the uh, American Rescue Plan monies can be spent for. We're going through that document. Uh, there is a, a National League of Cities uh, presentation tomorrow on what that guidance really means. Um, but I think our plan as we, as staff laid it out last month is solid and we should be able to move forward. Uh, the second thing is we were able to identify on, on 1475 Forest Hill Boulevard, we were able to identify that the county is going to provide $201,000 to help with that project through a, um, a local CDBG agreement. We're working now with Mrs. Hubbard to make sure she's comfortable with the terms of that agreement uh, and uh, making the application to move that forward. Uh, and then the last thing is uh, bad news. Uh, we were notified by uh, Congresswoman Frankel's office that we did not get any of the uh, community uh, planning funds. Thank you. How much was that going to be? That was going to be either a million dollars if they chose sewers or 850000 if they chose bridges, and they chose neither. All the money from what I saw on the list went to. For the benefit of the audience who may have missed it, Austin can explain a little bit better what this was. He said now we have the designation of the county being red, and we can just share it with the county and then that can be spent in the county designated fund. So uh, the Department of Environmental Protection has the responsibility for parks and recreation and uh, they have identified all over the state of Florida uh, water trails that they call blue trails. Most of them, 95% of them are in the northern part of the state. Uh, we are the first one uh, in Palm Beach County and the first one on the southeast coast to get designated as a water trail. So the Blue Way Trail now is actually a state designation that goes from uh, the northern uh, border of Palm Beach County on the intercoastal down through uh, the S-155 structure and up into the chain of lakes here on Lake Clark Shores and then down to Lake Ida. Very good. It allows us, uh, it, it opens up grant opportunities uh, with the state. Slowly but surely. Small, steady steps, Mr. Clark. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any other questions for Mr. Clark? Dan, um, if I may, um, I know I know we were trying to get the uh, the comments in our closing main quite some time. Let everybody know. So. Uh, a little bit louder, please, so the audience can hear you. So the challenge with being louder is that I create that garbly feedback. So we're trying to balance that carefully. Okay, thank you. Um, in 2015, we were identified by or, or approached by Mar-a-Lago Cay 
manufactured home community to provide them water. We currently provide them sewer. We uh, entered into an interlocal agreement with Palm Beach County to get additional water capacity and to ensure that our service area included Mar-a-Lago chemical water. Both of those issues out of the way, we created a design and sent it to Palm Beach County Road and Bridge. Um, Palm Beach County Road and Bridge took three and a half years to approve our design. And that's mostly because they are planning to widen uh, Lawrence Road and they could not figure out what they were doing with their design so they could not tell us where we could put our water main that wouldn't conflict with their design. So all of those issues were resolved thanks to the uh, Housing and Economic Sustainability Department of Palm Beach County because they have a liaison whose job it is is to get all of the different Palm Beach County departments on board for these projects. So I don't know how they did it, but miraculously we have a design now that is acceptable to everybody. Um, with the $125,000 CDBG money coming out of housing and economic sustainability department. They continue to provide their liaison and they are also providing the uh, federal grant oversight, but even better than that, they are providing training to us so that we can do the federal grant oversight because the expectation is with the American Rescue Money, we're gonna have to jump through the same hoops uh, that we have County uh, to move this project forward. In the interim, we have continuously been discussing with Mar-a-Lago K manufactured home communities owners um, about signing up for water. They have agreed in principle to uh, sign up with us. They have agreed in principle to replace the entire water within Marlowe K to bring it up to uh, Palm Beach County standards so that we have a system to connect to. And when that is done, they are going to give us that system so it will be our system. Um, and so we're working to that end uh, with them. Uh, we communicate with the engineers and the engineers communicate with the owners and everybody seems to say, yep, we're still there, we're still moving. They have a licensing deadline coming up for their water plant. We don't believe that they will be able to relicense the water plant. Uh, they'll probably get an extension to be able to do the construction for the new system. Uh, and then uh, they will start making connections to our system. So that's the ultimate end game is to add 600 customers to our water system in that area. All right. <clears throat> Any other questions? Yeah, I, um, I want to just follow up to what um, Tim brought up here. Could you maybe explain to us this process of reappointment? Because he doesn't seem to understand it, and I was a little confused on how reappointment's done. And I asked him today to remove an item from the agenda, but I'm not sure what item. Look like it got removed or did it um because there wasn't actually an item not appointing them i guess uh, resolution 2021-12 i'm sorry dash 11 was appointing a new member is that the person that would be replacing him i was confused um, the mayor took a different approach to your request, so I did not remove that item from the agenda as you suggested. Okay, so we, um, so I asked it to be removed and the mayor said it can't be removed? The mayor said that, well, I shouldn't be speaking for the mayor. Okay. I've, I've never asked to have an item removed so we could discuss it, so I didn't even know what the procedure is for that. I thought any council member could have that. I uh, figured if the item was going to be removed, it would have been 
at the request of a council member during the council meeting. Oh, um, that, when it's when you go, hey, that's just not our procedure. Is it agenda um, approved? Everyone approved it. Well, I never had that happen before. We would always remove it ahead of time and call our town attorney, a town manager, and have it removed. But if if it got stuck in because I didn't follow the procedure to have it removed, so be it. But I did uh, ask our town manager to remove an item from our agenda so we could discuss it. But obviously they didn't get done. So um, <clears throat> my question then goes back to you, Dan. If you could just tell us what is. Mr. Dougherty called me up and wanted to understand the procedure about reappointment. I really couldn't explain it to him because I wasn't a part and parcel of the reappointment reappointment process, meaning that I didn't look at applications. I don't remember doing that last month as mayor. I remember there being a conversation about whether we want to have them removed, you know, things of that nature. But we just, I'd like to be open about what how that procedure works. So the, the charter says that any any board member, code board, zoning board, park board, uh, infrastructure, surtax committee member serves at the pleasure of council. Um, council obviously cannot talk to one another. So it's my job to talk to each of the council members and to figure out if there's um, an interest in reappointing someone or appointing someone or not. And that's what I did. Uh, and that's where we are today. Have we ever had a situation raised before where we did not reappoint someone? Because I, I can't remember in the last 10 years. I always thought it was just sort of a thankless job that we were begging people to take. I, I, I don't know that either. Okay. I know people haven't been reappointed. Yeah, there's been a couple, several. Yeah. Okay. That's well, just I, on my, at my tenure. Uh, I, I'm not pointing here. fingers at you, Dan. I just wanted it to be out in the openness to the procedure about how it went because um, when Mr. Dowry called me, you know, he did remind me of the 10 years of service he's given our town as a volunteer on the code board and things of those nature. And as a, you know, I, I wanted it to be in the open, not to believe that anything secretively was done because I've never talked to any of these people up here about having him removed or reasons why he should be removed. But I kind of think that if that's what's happened and given the circumstances of Mr. Dougherty, it probably would have been a good debate. Just just for respect that he is a, uh, uh, he was on the board for 10 years and he is a major volunteer to the town. That was my only point. But it didn't get removed from the agenda, so it's really moot, sorry. Well, <clears throat> again, Nobody on the dais during the meeting asked for it to be. So we all voted in favor. So, and I didn't have, nor didn't I don't think anybody else conversations about the agenda with any of the council ahead of the meeting that would be improper. All right, on to council comments. Wait, before that, by the way, Mike Bredaway is trying to talk, but he apparently doesn't have a mic feature. So I don't know, maybe something we need to look into for the next meeting. He doesn't know how to unmute or mute himself because he says there's no mic feature. Anyhow. He might right. just have a computer. Sometimes if you just have a computer, you may not have a mic. Well, I think he's very computer literate. Yeah. But yeah, we'll start with, uh, yeah, any further questions for Mr. Clark? Any questions for Chief? We skipped that earlier. So I have a question for the Chief. I do. Um, just to follow, just to follow up, not, okay. not to be to the follow up to the comment here about the iguanas. Um, I went on the Florida web, Florida Wildlife website, and basically, you know, they say you can humanely kill iguanas, and then if you link from there, it says you can shoot them with a pellet gun, stab them in the brain, even decapitate them as long as they don't suffer. Don't freeze them, drown them, or That's what I'm reading on this uh, link to the website. And apparently it's a, it's, a, it, it's been a topic for years, for many years, as to how you go about doing that. So the question becomes, Chief, how do we define humanely killing iguanas so that I don't, we can tell residents what to expect? Well, I think if you follow the requirements, I mean, everybody's that different opinion on what might be humane, not humane. We did uh, make contact with four or five people that were shooting them up at the uh, Pine Tree Park. And 
told them that they weren't allowed to do that in the park. Also told them they weren't allowed to shoot them on people's property. Right. We, we, you can't discharge firearms in town. Um, so you couldn't shoot them with a regular firearm. But apparently it's humane to decapitate, <clears throat> just so you know, because that apparently kills the, them quickly. Um, these individuals were uh, skin them and they were going to eat them, eat the tails. Okay. Well, it also says that when you kill them, you can't just leave. Them. Well, it says if you capture one, you must kill it. Right. That's the other irony of it. You can't capture it and then re-release it because then you violate the law. Right. Because it was just put on on April 29th of this year. It was just placed on the invasive species list of the Florida Wildlife. Yeah, just just recently, just a couple of weeks ago, um, they put it on a, a, an invasive species list. So. I'm just I just wanted to let you know well, I I, th I think the problem's been addressed and I don't I don't think we're going to have any more issues as far as uh, the individuals that we may contact with and maybe some other people but um, uh, this was up at Pine Tree Park and of course down on uh, Venetian and I I checked and I think we 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 had two complaints Bill was the first time I heard Bill uh, make a comment on it so um, We'll address it and we'll keep an eye on it. And uh, we we do have an ordinance on discharging uh, uh, pellet guns and BB guns in town, but uh, things have changed over the years. And as you know, with code enforcement, there could be some issues because you'd be allowed to discharge that in your backyard if it's your property. So, okay. Thank you, that's all I have. Thank you very Thank much, you. Chief. Any questions for the Chief? All right, we're going to move on to council comments, starting with Mr. Pavone. I want to just wish everybody happy Memorial Day. I don't know if because you guys know I'm town council, but you do say hi to me. So I, I, do, <laughs> I do appreciate that. <laughs> but no, I, I do understand. I, I always wave hi to them. Try to just, I, we appreciate what you do too. So. But besides that, no more other comments. Did, um, yeah, just to follow up, I wasn't pointing fingers and I wanted him to understand that um, government in the sunshine means we do it in the open. So nothing happened before he was not appointed. Um, I, I mean, I think we all agree up here. None of us have ever discussed whether he should be on the, uh, the code board. Um, so I just want you to understand that um, it, it, it is what it is. I'm going to invite you to apply back again at any time. I invite anyone to be a volunteer on any board uh, because it's a lot of, I did it for 10 years. You did it for quite a few years, right, Paul? Yeah. Six. Six years. I mean, I did it before I became a council member. So, I mean, it's, it's a good service, but I wasn't pointing fingers. I just wanted to do that and I guess now we know that if we want to pull an item from our agenda we have to say it on here now I'll just tell you Malcolm Lewis God rest his soul pulled every item he wanted beforehand and he never it was just pulled and it was set aside and that was always been our procedure before tonight um, but if that's going to be your procedure mayor then now I know um, because informally you know you may have we have questions so the public understands we talk to individually and we have questions about the agenda and questions and you know we may not agree something goes on our consent agenda then typically we would say let's take it off or let's discuss it take it off for discussion um and that's been done many times before that's all i have thanks oh happy memorial day weekend and thank you for your concerns always hey as a lawyer you add an extra little benefit to, to things because you can look things up there's uh, only like three other lawyers up here and there's one over there <laughs> we've got enough lawyers around here but we appreciate you being a part of the town and you know coming to meetings and sitting here that's what government's about thank that's you, all i have thank you mayor absolutely president brooks yep. and people you want to know i don't have it in me to be able to do what those people do even with a pellet gun or a machete or anything like that but that is what the FWC is advocating for because of that designation as an invasive species. And everybody has difference of opinions. I, I, 
I couldn't do it. Um, I just couldn't do it, even though there's trouble along with other invasive species like the the monitor and other things that are out there that they still prescribe chop his head off shoot him you know do a headshot do that with the pellet gun it seems inhumane all the way around no matter how you do it but there is really no other way that they see other than a continuous freeze for 60 to 90 days and we all know that's not going to happen here so I would Did have once. Those, I, I would have those <laughs> for 60 or 90 days. I don't Did, know. Remember we had one about uh, seven or eight Maybe years six ago. days. Yeah. <laughs> Killed but a lot of them. I do agree. It's very distressing to see that. Um, <laughs> now, even, uh, even as, you know, it is true. In some places, that stuff goes for $60 a pound, that tail meat. There are people that eat that. We had an incident with the um, people that were fishing on the uh, eastern bank along the Keller Canal there, jumping in and swimming and chasing the iguanas and swimming and getting them. If you can believe that. I know. It's just, so I, I, I understand your distress about that. And Tim, of course, everybody, and you know everybody appreciates everything you've done for the town of Lake Clark Shores. Uh, now, I'm my turn to speak. I didn't interrupt you. Tim, please. You can disagree after this. I let you speak. Just let me speak. I'm trying to give you some praise here. I understand it's frustrating when you're trying to do something like that, and I can understand. It's going to go a different way. It doesn't diminish your capacity to be able to volunteer. Every one of us up here volunteers, every one of us, the chief, everybody. We're involved in every single little thing. We've all written checks. We all do things for no charge for everything. I understand your distress at at how it appeared, how it came out. We don't have conversations up here. This, what I do here, is not worth going to jail or getting a five or $10,000 fine. It's just not worth it to me. I'm here to create community. I'm here to be part of this community. I've been living on this chain of lakes since 1970. It's not an easy job that any of us have deciding who's gonna this and who's gonna that, and somebody's gonna be upset. But I do wanna, Thank you right from here for all the work that you've done. Okay. Chief, is there ever any other possibility of more marine time or is it just pretty much limited to Saturdays? I, I know we have problems and that's why well, because I, people use Lake Clark Shores as this step. Well, step as step you step know, step we're, we're a small department. Yes, sir. I do know. It, it takes five people to cover one shift. I got 11 people and then I have the part-time people. But another thing is um, I've been using part-time people to cover the road. You know, we've had the COVID. Thank goodness none of my officers have come down with the COVID, but I've had some of my officers have family members, so they had to stay home for two weeks. So we got people trying to go on vacation, and we got people that uh, uh, we're in the middle of getting recertified, so we got to do all the training. <clears throat> Uh, we got until June. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on that maybe the general public doesn't know. But sure. I mean, you got vacations and I mean, I got people that get a month's of vacation. So during that month, I uh, try to use the part time or I have to pay time and a half. And it is, as far as officers leaving, um, I've had a few, but I will tell you that all the police departments are having trouble retaining. West Palm Beach lost 40 police officers to the sheriff's department. And some of the cities are, are doing like $10,000 bonuses. So some of the cities are trying to take police officers away from uh, other cities in the communities. So, well, it's a but I will town, tell you my Marine is a challenge. It's <laughs> it a it challenge. is, but you know, that's not the residence issue. That's management. So, you know, we do the best. So it's more important for me to cover the road to respond to incidents uh, where we can get to people. You're, you're never going to change the jet ski people. And then that's who it is, those jet ski people that are racing up and down. I mean, I can hear them in my backyard where I am. I can hear them. Um, I'm glad to hear that the reckless driving has been addressed. Well, we Because there's been many times I'm out on my boat and they just have no regard. Well. We, we have written 
um, tickets. And as you know, the criminal justice system is very liberal in Palm Beach County. So you get many bites of the apple. So, and then some people paying a hundred, two or three hundred dollars may not be an issue for them. So, so you know, there's a lot of things that work, but we learn to work around and do the best we can. So, but, but we we have taken action. Matter of fact, I get more calls from people complaining about us stopping them and writing tickets than they do from people complaining about the violations. Right. <laughs> Okay, well, happy belated Mother Days to all the mothers. <laughs> Every day is Mother's Day in my house, so Indeed. that's all I've got, sir. Thank, thank you. Vice Mayor Shelton. Well, thanks uh, to everybody who's attending virtually and those that came um, in person. Ms. Grant, it's nice to to uh, hear of your uh, your service to the uh, to our country. Um, Teresa, there's a non-emergency phone number that I think if you call, it'll go to dispatch and dispatch can probably respond a little bit quicker uh, to any of your concerns with regard to the uh, golf carts up and down. Um, so the non-emergency? Well, well, I knew you wouldn't because I knew you wouldn't. That's I just wanted to remind you we have that non-emergency number. Okay, they were responsive. There we go. Um, everybody should have received their shorelines. And um, I looked through it and I noticed the new mayor uh, and his focus, so I'm kind of partial. But I'm concerned of the fact there's no phone number in here to call the town hall. There's no non emergency phone number in here to call uh, if you have an issue. Uh, there's no email address to get in touch with the town manager. Um, I'm concerned that uh, I think that somehow or another it got overlooked, and I would like to see it back in uh, the uh, contact information and uh, to contact everybody, including the code uh, hotline, uh, code enforcement hotline. Somehow or another, I think that got um, uh, eliminated. So if we can put that back in, I think that'd be great. Also, I wanted to thank Senator Berman. Uh, I thought she did a great job br uh, bringing us up to date. And Mr. Penske did a great job. And uh, some of you who do not know Mr. Penske, he's our lobbyist, that we hire him to help us um, advance our ask to up at Tallahassee. And he's um, been on board now, I think, four or five years at least. And he does an excellent job. And I suggested to Mr. Clark that we hack his um, report and put it on the website because I think it will uh, wake up everybody a little bit of the attack uh, that Tallahassee is doing on home rule. And what do I mean by that? They are preempting. The word preemption is the state legislature says, hey, local governments, you can't do what you need to do to address the issues in our community. We know better. And as a former member of the board of directors of the Florida League of Cities, I was up there at every session and it's, it, it, it's unbelievable the arrogance that these lawmakers have that they think that they know better than we do to how to police our, um, our community. So um, Dan, if you'd please, next time this goes out, if you'd have all the contact information in there, I'd appreciate it. Also at the back of the, uh, the shorelines is a very telling picture and the telling picture suggests that there's a lot of vegetation at the south end of the lake and that some of my neighbors have come to me and, and complained about the vegetation at their end of the lake and we had discussed this previously and it was suggested that we are following uh, what uh, we have been um, advised from um, University of Florida so I asked if you all recall it was several months ago I asked Dan to have staff reach out to the University of Florida to see if we're doing uh, if we're doing enough or if there's more that we can in fact do. And Mr. Clark advised that the University of Florida got back in touch with us and said we're doing everything that we are allowed to do. And um, to set the record straight, the town of Lake Clark Shores does not own the lake of Lake Clark Shores. Make that perfectly clear. I stand on the record. 
I always thought we did because we make the rules and regulations and we do, um, we, we try and implement uh, enforcement. But the Lake Clark Shores is owned by, help me out, Mr. Clark, a land trust. I think it's called the State Land Trust, which is overseen by the cabinet. The, ca the state cabinet. Correct. So if anything is to be done with the lake itself, we have to go through the cabinet. Florida um, cabinet with the governor and lieutenant governor and, and all those up there. However, because we are a municipality, we are charged uh, uh, with the responsibility to uh, take care of the lake. And uh, it's budgeted for our um, uh, for our neighbors to appreciate the fact that we uh, we try and keep it up and spray for the uh, the vegetation as much as we possibly can, but uh, there's a uh, there's a, a a happy balance has to be made with the environment and the fishes uh, underneath all those um, vegetation. If you put too much um, pesticides on there, I think it's going to upset uh, the. Uh, the is it called the ecosystem mm -hmm. or it's, yeah. it's it, something like that happens. So I just want everybody to know uh, that we're trying the best we can. Uh, please pick up the phone, call the town hall at 964-1515 and make an appointment to talk with any member of the council and uh, Dan on any issue regarding the vegetation at the south end of the lake or any other issue that you may have. Um, and Tim Daughtry, I'm, uh, I want to commend you on all of the hard work that you've done. I've worked uh, with you side by side, um, and um, I hope we continue to work side by side because you're, um, you're a good friend and um, you're a great volunteer, you and your daughter, uh, for the, in particular, the, uh, the barbecues that uh, you and I have been working on. Um, and it's nice that you recognized uh, my buddy Jim. May his memory be eternal. So I think that's all I have to say. I want to thank uh, uh, the concern that you had that the police officers need to be more uh, uh, in, in, uh, engaged. I agree with you completely. And so I've requested that the town council be provided with copies of all of the police, uh, the, our police officers, so we uh, get to know them also because there's been some new hires recently. And uh, I think when you're out there patrolling, um, I think it's been described as like a uh, your head on a swivel, uh, always look around because uh, I've heard some very interesting stories that do not seem to be um, indicative of the awareness and the engaging. And uh, we can always improve on that. I've made my concerns known to the chief and to Dan. But uh, thank you for uh, your hard work and your service and your commitment to making the town a little bit better. But I think we can all uh, improve, even even us. Every day. So try to. Yeah. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right. I'm going to keep my comments brief. want to uh, congratulate Jerry Sanchez, John Maples, Brenda Hockman, Ivan Gomez, and Leonard Fuhrer. For their continued service on the various boards and committees uh, and their reappointments or appointments that were done today truly appreciate your service tim thank you very much for your continued service to our town over the many years i've worked alongside you served alongside you truly appreciate it and enjoy it I want to also thank <clears throat> bill murphy and Eliza, y'all did a great job at putting together our clean, clean up the lake, truly, especially in, you know, given the challenges that we had. Our specific volunteers, Ken Barker, Marty Barker, Greg Parkinson, Sharon Martin, Aaron Murphy, and Jim Walton, as well as the donations made by Waste Management with via Ellis, Ellen Smith, and the Government and Community Affairs Manager for Keep Palm Beach County Beautiful, Lourdes Ferris, the Solid Waste Authority of Palm Beach County, Linda Moreno. Really appreciate all that you guys did. Hopefully next year, or the next time we do this, we have a big turnout. We're all in person. We can get those you know, 10, 15 boats 
back at the boat ramp to check in and things can get a little bit back to normal. We can collect thousands of pounds uh, next time when we do our clean up the lake. All right. And if I did not mention it, I did not. Mike Wade, want to thank you very much for your service on the zoning board. I know it has now come to a conclusion, but thank you for your service as well. Make a motion to approve. So move. So move. Second. Let it be written, let it be done. All right, moving on to the CRA meeting. Mary, can we? Mary, can we have one? Nope. There you go. Yeah. Take a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Take a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. No presentation. Move on to new business. Take a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Take a motion to approve this resolution 2021 02. So moved. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second. President Pro Tem Freehold. Any audience comments, email questions, written questions, or public questions? Audience comments. No, sir. All right. Let's go on to commissioner comments, starting with Mr. Pavone. No comments. Uh, no comments. Except I, well, I actually talked to um, Joe at Joe Bistro last week. Grateful for the town taking an interest in helping with him. Opened up an expanded restaurant and uh, he expects to start construction shortly. He just got his permits. It'll probably be our first full scale, high scale restaurant in town. I think it's in it's going to have a lounge and things of that nature. And this might be one of the models that we're going to be able to license and help with. It's a good, worthy investment and look forward to the CRA helping with the expansion. I agree. I just talked to him. Yeah, it's become it's really grown on us here in town. He's really a great guy. I don't does he live in town or he lives close to town? Yeah, he lives like in the Lake Charlie area of Boston. <laughs> I think it's Lake Patrick, it's right across the Palmetto Lake. <laughs> Either we take over that area or he moves in here. <laughs> he, he commented he can't afford to live here. Um but that, I I just say that that you know, he thanked me personally. For what the CRA did for him, which was through Dan's effort to help him initially on the water, um, the water, and that's helped him run a business, particularly during COVID, which is very hard to do. So he's keeping it afloat up there. I'm really glad to see that. Um, we don't have to worry about Dunkin' Donuts or they're they're jamming. Yeah. Um, but I'd like to see us think of some other ideas of how to use CRA for more popular businesses right in that class. His, his restaurant, his restaurant's been a problem for our office. It's too close. Yeah, I know. So it's like, <laughs> I'm like, do I go home for lunch or? No. Nope, you walk there and you live there. You I'm, need a frequent uh, dining car. Need points or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only way you're going to get that is using your credit card. <laughs> yeah, I need something. <laughs> Dan, um, you remember we were talking about the path to go from Barbados, I think, through Town Hall. Is that going to be able to access that back there? Because I noticed the, there was no berm there, and there was a berm there. I don't know who put that there. Was that the owners of that property, or they didn't want people cutting through? No, they they don't like people cutting through. Well, I was sitting in line one day, and what do you think I see with that big old, goes right over big old truck? Just go right over, and I said, oh, that fix that right there. <laughs> but I just wanted to reiterate, but will that be removed when we have this access or no we're just gonna have to configure a different way the access uh which uh the pathway was approved tonight by council the expenditure so thank you right. very much is going to go out the man gate 
that we currently have in the back of the park. That, that single three foot wide gate is gonna be taken out and replaced with a five foot wide gate. Right, and then we can just come around the other way. And... The, the, the idea is uh, the pathway will be through the parking lot to the tennis court, between the tennis court and town hall, and then up the alley uh, just west of the tennis court all the way to the fence, and then that little gate will be taken out and a, and a real gate will be put in. And there you go. That's all I have. Thank you so much. Thank you. Vice Chair Shelvin. Thank you very much. Congratulations on, um, to everybody. Thanks for all the support that you uh, you provide the uh, us up, up here. Appreciate it. Nice to see you again, Mr. Palin. Nice to be here, sir. Thank you. My comments are this. I spoke with um, Elliot about how we can grow or expand or otherwise get better exposure for our CRA. He has some experience with this in the past. We discussed some options. I asked him to get with Dan and discuss it with Dan, but I wanted to get his opinion that I think there are businesses that are coming into our CRA that have no idea the direction. And I think we, if we can better promote it by going out and uh, talking with either in the chamber of commerce or things of that nature, say, hey, we're looking to expand or you're looking to move. We have a CRA that can assist in you know, any type of business, not any type, but some expenses or other you know, provide incentives to bring you into town. Because as of right now, we far exceeded our expectations to date from when this originally began, which was before I was even on council. And uh, I think in order to really start moving it forward, we really fit into it. Either having a welcome packet prepared for new businesses that come in town and they get that, you know, mailed to them or dropped off, to them, whatever the case may be, so that they know, hey, maybe if I need some assistance. And then, of course, there's the aspect of actually bringing in even more business into, uh, into the CRA and, and make it even better. I think. So I wanted to get y'all's thoughts on, on those ideas. Anytime you can welcome the business into that area, it's going to be a huge benefit to us. I mean, you hear people talking. I'm glad to hear he's talking about expanding that restaurant because just think if you can get on your golf cart and go right there and it's a little bit nicer. And yeah, he's got actually, two, I don't know how much room is two in there. Bay, he's got two bays. He's going to expand to one, but he's got the other bay as well. And fortunately, he worked it out with a landlord that he doesn't have to pay rent or anything for a while until he gets it going. And then I think he got uh, some funds from us for a grease trap, which he was really thankful for. So, sure. yeah, I mean, I, and there was that uh, flower shop that opened up and they did a little grand opening. Remember that? Yeah. Like that, right? Yeah. I mean, we just need to start encouraging um, you know, these groups to you know, take advantage of it. I, I believe Joe's third restaurant is the last bay available in Forest Hill Plaza. It is, yeah. He's hoping the pharmacy moves out. They're they're, they're not, <laughs> but I I don't think there's any commercial space available there. And if there's any available, it's going to be across the street from Westlake. Right. But everything else is pretty much fully occupied now. So it's good. It's great. Yeah. Those were comments. That's it. Take a motion. So second. Now, I